Okay, good morning, everybody. There was a student that he learned at Gur Yeshiva. And before the holidays, he came to the Rebbe of Gur and asked him for a blessing and asked him, you know, please say something to me that make me stronger. You know, I'm going to the... Uh, to be uh, in the holidays today, you know, it's a lot of nisyonot, so please give me a bracha and say something that will make me stronger. So the Rebbe of Gur said to him, you have to remember all your life that Hashem is not joking, okay? Hashem is not joking. He's not laughing. So the student didn't understand what's the Hashem is not laughing, so Hashem is all the time, you know, like uh, tense and, you know, angry, you know, and things like that. What is the Hashem is not laughing? He didn't understand. He didn't want to ask the rabbi because, you know, he feel a bit, you know, embarrassed to ask, you know, what the Hashem is not laughing? So he asked the son of the rabbi, he's also a Rosh Hashiva, and he asked him the day after that, you know, your father said to me that I have to remember that the Hashem is not laughing. What did, what is, what did he meant? So the son said to him, you know, I'm your rabbi. I'm teaching you in the morning. And I know that you have a hard time to get up in the morning. So let's say, for example, you decide that you promise me, you know, I have, time, I have a hard time to get in the morning, but tomorrow I will raise up in the morning. On time, you will see I will be first in the Bet Midrash. I will open the Bet Midrash at 7 o'clock. I will be there. And the day after that, you are not coming on 7, you are coming on 8. And I said to you, what happened to you? And you said to me, no, I had the fight with the uh, evil inclination. It was very hard to fight. And really, you know, he, he, he killed me, okay, he, he, he struck me, I don't know. It was hard to raise up in the morning. But tomorrow, I promise the Rebbe that tomorrow I will be first, okay? Seven o'clock, I'm there. So the Rebbe said, okay, I believe you. We will meet together to, uh, the day after that. The day after that, he's coming 8.30. So the Rebbe said, what happened to you now? He said, oh, hey, again, it's again, what is this? So, such a hard time for me, you know, the whole inclination, he, he, he like, he's, you know, Took me like that. I couldn't raise up in the morning. But tomorrow, I promise you, I'll be first. And I, I, believe in me, okay? I will be tomorrow first. First. Day after that, 9.30. What happened today? Today, I won the war. But it was so hard, I had to sleep a little bit after that, okay? <laughs> so I will laugh at you, okay? <laughs> you promise me every day. So I will laugh at you. But Hashem is not laughing at you. Hashem believes in you. Even if you are promising a thousand times, I will change, I promise you, I will be good. And you know, the day after that, you're going back to, you know, the yeah, usual way of uh, behaving. Hashem is not laughing at you, Hashem really believes in you. So we have to understand that Hashem loves us, and Hashem believes that we can change. But you have to believe in that also, because each one of us has two voices inside of him. There's the external voice, and there's the inner voice. Let's say, for example, a kid wants want to raise up in the morning early. And he said to me, no, Rebbe, I really want to wake up in the morning early, and I promise you I will do that. This is the external voice. He says, I will do that. But if his inside voice is saying, I cannot do that, I really want that, but I can't. Who do you think will win? The external voice or the inside, in, internal voice? Internal. internal voice. So we have to learn and to listen inside of us what we are telling our ourselves inside. If I'm telling myself I, I'm not good, I'm a wicked person, I won't be able to change, so this is the outcome will be, because you are saying that to yourself. But if you won't say that to yourself, well, on the contrary, you will say, I'm willing to do that, I'm, I'm, I'm able to do that. I will give an example, when there is extreme times, when you have a really big pressure, that your inner voice doesn't succeed to talk with you, you have a lot of strength. I will give an example. Uh, from the BBC News, they send that, uh, uh, article to me, this was written there that a woman was lifting a car 20 times her body weight. What the story was, she was driving in the car and her husband went, was next to her, okay? And uh, her husband was sitting next to her and it's nice to, to drive with your husband next to you, okay? He's really calm, you know, and gentle. There was a woman said to her husband, stop underestimating my, you know, my driving skills, okay? So he said, I, I didn't say anything to you, I didn't say anything to you. He said, yeah, but you are sitting with a helmet, okay? <laughs> so so uh, she was driving the car and he was sitting next to her, and then he put out his shoes, okay, and his uh, sock, and put out his leg from the window, like, like, uh, So the window was 
go inside his toes. Air freshener. Air freshener, right? <laughs> <laughs> the eczema. So uh, his wife was looking at him, I don't, be I don't believe it. Okay, I married this guy. I don't My mother was right. So she, I don't know if it's because of the smell or whatever, she lost control on the car, okay? So the car was looking like, like, like uh, making uh, rounds, and then turned on his side, ah, poof, like that. And his leg is outside, and he started to shout, ah, ah, ah. So <laughs> she was hurt also because you know the car is like that. But she saw that her husband is really in distress. So she wanted, she wanted to help him. So they went out of the window, come to his side, and then they took the car and left it. And he's pulling, pull, pulled his, his leg. Okay? So you have to say it's amazing because if I will bring this woman to here, please come here. Pick this up, okay? I cannot do that, I back. <laughs> it's not easy, okay? But you lifted a car, okay? Why did she succeed to lift the car? Because her inner voice had no time to say to her, you cannot do that, okay? We are, we are talking to ourselves all the time. But if we won't believe that we can do something, we won't be able to do that. I told the Hebrew uh, speakers, uh, Hebrew people there, that there was a guy that he, he met his rabbi in the... Uh, in the beach, and he asked his rabbi, you know, how did you re receive such a big, uh, I don't know, uh, degree of spirituality? How did you achieve that? So the rabbi said, oh, you really want to know? He said, of course I want to know. He said, come with me to the beach. Into the water? Into the water. So he put in, he get in the, with the rabbi into the water, like uh, over here, and the rabbi said to him, take, take a deep, deep breath and you know, dive inside the water. So the guy is taking a deep breath and <laughs> diving underneath the water. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, his air was finished, he wanted to get out, and the rabbi put his head, hand on his head, like <laughs> So the guy like <laughs> and the rabbi doesn't let him get out. <laughs> and the, the boy, <laughs> and the guy, the rabbi, no, no. After like uh, 30 minutes, the rabbi said, he saw that there is no resistance, so he left him alone, and the guy was wanting the air, like, <gasps> rabbi, what you are doing to me? So the rabbi said, don't shout at me. Please tell me, what did you want when you were underneath the water? So he said, what I wanted? To see dolphins, what I wanted. I wanted air. So the rabbi said to him, if you want to succeed as you wanted air, you will succeed. Because you have to really want that, OK? You have to really want that. Because everybody say, I want to improve myself. Yeah, I really mean that. I really want that. But you don't mean that, OK? You're sad because you're supposed to say things like that. But if you really want something, and you will be dedicated to that, you will succeed. But we have to understand three things. First of all, don't underestimate small things. OK, we talked about in the davening of Shabbat. In Israel, I'm working with a lot of organizations of Kirov. One of their organizations called, called Ayelet HaShachar. Ayelet HaShachar is an organization that works in uh, kibbutzim and places that there is no, no religion. OK? So they send me there to Shabbat, to, to make Shabbat. And uh, the guy who organized everything, he's called Rav Shlomo and this is his name. He's the chief uh, master there. And he said to me, you know the reason we started here? So he said that uh, we went to a kibbutz called Ramat HaKovesh to make Rosh Hashanah to the kibbutz people. And you have to understand, it's very, very secular people, very secular people. So uh, it was 25 people that came to Davening. And he took with him three people. One is the Arab Shlomo Ranan, this is the Rebbe. The other person, he was the Baal Kore and Baal Tfila, okay, the, the Chazan. And the third per person was the Baal Tokia, the person that bought the chauffeur. So there were the three my only uh, Orthodox people, the other people was from the kibbutz. So the mother of the uh, chauffeur, both, blower, I don't know what to call it, uh, Tokia uh, said to him, you're, you're going to the kibbutz of Ramat Kovesh? You know, the brother of your grandpa is living there. His grandpa was a Holocaust survivor. They were, the, they, they were orphaned. They, were lost, they lost all the family. There was only two brothers. The, the, his grandfather, the, he was the oldest one. He was 14 when he went to Israel. And his brother was six years old. So the, the, his grandpa went to be adopted to a red, religious family in, in Nebrak. And his brother went to the kibbutz. So he raised up as kibbutz, okay, a very secular person, and his brother was very, raised as an orthodox person. So the, all the time they were fighting, okay, they were this, and another religion, all the time, you know, trying to. He wanted to, to convert him you know, to become a secular person. He wants to make him a bal shuvah. So uh, they wa weren't in, in touch most of the time. So the mother said, "Your grandfather died, and you know now you are going to Ramat Kovesh. Your grandpa brother is living there." 
say to him, you know, Shana Tova. So on the second day of the Rosh Hashanah, he went to meet him. He was looking for him in the kibbutz. He found his place, was knocking on the door, and a very old person opened the door and said, what do you want? He said, no, he saw an Orthodox person. He said, I'm, I'm the, the grandson of your brother. He said, what? Come in, you know, what are you doing here? We're in the kibbutz, Rosh Hashanah. And he said to him, you know, we're diving in here, we're making a little thing. Maybe you want to come us, with us to, to Daven. He said, no! You are starting now like my brother, all the time religion, 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 daven, daven. I don't want to, I don't want to hear that. So okay, okay, don't be mad. Okay, nothing happened, okay. But you know, I'm the chauffeur uh, to Keba Shofar. How do you say that? Blower. 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 Ma yeah. in Hebrew. The blower of the shofar, okay? So I'm the blower here. So and I have shofar in my pocket. Do you want to hear chauffeur? You know it's Rosh Hashanah? Said, no, I don't want that. Stop, you know. Make me get into the things like that. And his wife was listening to him and said, Yaakov, it's not nice what you are saying here. He came especially to blow to the, uh, with the chauffeur here, okay? Let him blow. So, so he said, okay, he doesn't, he didn't, they didn't know what's the worst thing, in, in his wife or the chauffeur, okay? But I think the chauffeur, it's, it's easier because, you know, it's, it's <laughs> small time, so do it. So uh, he said, okay, blow whatever you need. So this guy took the chauffeur and he said, maybe Hashem taught me to blow the shofar only for that moment, okay? I'm not going now to blow the shofar, the Ilu Nishmat, all the six million people that died in the Holocaust, okay? I'm blowing them out in the shofar to the sake of all the Israel people in the world, okay? And to the merit of the people of the kibbutz here. <laughs> so he took the shofar, closed his eyes, and blew. Ta -ta! Ta -ta 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 after he blew the shofar, he opened his eyes and he saw the old person crying, 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 crying. So he, he didn't want to, you know, not interrupt and say, you know, there is also tefillin and things like that. You want another mitzvah or something? <laughs> he decided to leave him with, with the experience, okay? So he left. Day after that, the old person died. See how much you have to be careful with catch of fog. Stop, it is not the, the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> but yesh kone olamo b'sha'achat. You can, like, find your way in one minute if you be true with yourself. Because a lot of time Hashem is calling us. Hashem is talking with us, asking you, know, change yourself. Be stronger, be close to me. Please, I love you. But a lot of people, you know, we don't want to sing that, and we postpone it. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. We, have, we, have, we need something to push us. Maybe you know this story. It's a long story that there was a kid that was playing football in his college, and his father came to each game that he was playing. His father was sitting in the same place every time, and the tournament start, and his as a team won once, twice, third time, and the champion the, 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 the finals came. A few days before the finals, the, the kid didn't come to practice. And he came at the finals, the, the Gemara, the, the final game. And he said to his coach, coach, please let me play. So he said, uh, the coach said to him, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you to play because you're not the best player here, okay? And, and the finals, it's not, it's not a game, okay? It's a mishak, okay? So you have to win here. So the guy said, please, let me, let me try 10 minutes. If I will prove myself, let me stay here. But if not, you can replace me. So the coach said, okay, you have 10 minutes, try whatever you can. And that 10 minutes, he showed, you know, his best. He took the ball, ran away, and, and made a touchdown, three time touchdowns. And everybody took him on the, the shoulders and said, <laughs> Susharim, a gate, it's also Shusharim. So. <laughs> He really was proud of them, so the coach asked him, you know, where have you been all the years, all, all the year? Okay, you're such a good player. We didn't, why didn't you play like that all the games? So he said to his coach, you know, coach, my father saw me, so I really want to please him. So the coach said to him, sorry that I'm saying that to you. I know where your father is sitting every game. Today, he wasn't here. <laughs> he wasn't here today. So the kid said to the coach, and the coach, you don't understand, my father, died a few days ago, and he was blind. He never saw me. Today is the first game he sees me. This is the, re the, the reason I played as I played. We have to understand that Hashem is looking on us. 
and he really wants you to succeed. Trust yourself. Believe that you have the strength to succeed. Don't underestimate your, your power. Don't underestimate your, your ability. But you have to help each other. And this is what I will f want to finish. And we'll, I'll explain what you have to help each other. I talked to you about the, the, the Hebrew part, maybe. They sent me to, in Israel to give a talk um, to a bunch of uh, special kids. Special kids, uh, special needs, right? And they showed me that there is uh, Olympics games. There is every four years Olympics games that we know everybody. But uh, there's also once, once in a year, there is uh, Olympics games for them, special Olymp Olympics, right? So they showed me a uh, one me 100 meter run that all the special kids was standing, like ten, 10 of them, like that. And you know, it was the beginning of the run running. And they run very fast, you know, trying to chase each other. And it was one of the guys, very fast, was flying. <laughs> He almost reached the end of the tournament. Then he heard somebody behind him that was shouting, "I!" So he looked behind and he saw one of the, his friends that his, was with his legs, twisted his, his legs, and then he fell down. So instead of continuing to run, he turned back and go back to, to help him. So all the other runners are running and seeing coming back. So he said, they said to themselves, but it's, it's back and forth, and we didn't know that. So they looked back and they saw the, the other person that was f falling down. So they all turned around and went to help him. They arrested him from the ground, put their, their hands like that, and started to walk together to the end of the tournament. And there was like a red flag or red uh, something at the end. So they took the, the uh, how do you say that? Tape. tape. Okay. They took the tape together, put their hands together, and said one, two, three, and they turned it. And when I saw that, you know, I had tears in my eyes, okay? Because there was also beautiful music behind background music. So, but I asked myself, if it was of the, you know, the regular people, do you think they will stop also? Will yeah, no. of course. Because why? Because they are, they, are, they are special kids. So maybe we are supposed to also to be special and think of each other. Even though the, in Rosh Hashanah, it says that Kol Ba'e Olam, all the world, He's going through Hashem, kivnei maron, one after one. But Hashem doesn't want us to, to, to be alone. Each one of us has to think about the other person. How can I encourage him? How can I say good words to him, to your wife, to your husband, to your kids? Each one of us are going through a lot of hard time, okay? It's very hard in this world. No, none of us is having fun all the time, okay? It's very hard. But if you will know that somebody is care for you, somebody is diving on you, someone you know, loves you, it's, it's, it's given us a lot of powers, okay? So let me finish in one thing. I will tell you a, a, a thing that uh, in Israel, there was a, a guy with a truck, okay? It's not his truck. Masai, he was driving on the highway and he saw a bridge. And he said, it is not his truck. So he said, I'm going through underneath this bridge. I think I'm going underneath the bridge. There was this, uh, the, the height was 5.5. He said, I'm going underneath this. So he went with his uh, truck and <laughs> stuck underneath the bridge, OK? He's putting the vest uh, and <laughs> trying to get out. He's kind of stuck underneath the bridge, OK? Oh, there is a traffic because of, the, because of him. Everybody's pumping him. <laughs> and he said, what do you want from me? I'm stuck here, OK? So a tow, tow truck came and tried to you know, pull him out, pulling up, he doesn't succeed, he's stuck underneath the bridge. So a young guy said, let me, I'm, I'm, I can put it out. So how can you do that, you know, it's stuck. He took a knife, come to the wheels, and <laughs> stop it. And <laughs> all the air went down. Now push it out. If you feel stuck in your life, take your air out, okay? You fool yourself. <laughs> you know, fool, yeah, not, not fooling yourself, fool, you know, with, and this is the reason we are blowing the shofar, and the shofar is supposed to be uh, kafuf. Kafuf is uh, bended. Because in Rosh Hashanah, as more as you come bended, it's better than you. They're bended for you. It says in the phrase of the Gemara, shana shi rasha betchilata. Rasha, it's like a poor person. Shana shi rasha betchilata, mit asheret besofa. At the end, you will be rich. So we have to go, come to the Rosh Hashanah with a feeling, Hashem, we doesn't have anything. Please give us money, health, children, shalom bayit, and whatever. And if you will come like that, begging for Hashem, please help us, so Hashem will help us and will give 
ואול אוף יו, שנה טובה, גמר חטיבה כתיבה וחתימה טובה, תכלה שנה וקללותיה ותחל שנה וברכותיה. השם הוא בלס יו אול, ואת אול דה ברכות, תודה רבה, בהצלחה.